Hello, my name is Mark Anderson. As Andrea said, I'm a senior applications engineer at Zerotech, and my specialty is NX CAM or CAM softwares. Uh, today's agenda, we're going to go through, as you know, from moving from, if you're moving from 1892 to 1899, you're, you already are used to not seeing the drilling command. But if you're moving from something previous, like 12 upper to the, uh, the um, continuous update releases, then you're just gonna see that the drilling option has been removed. You can still open a drilling, a legacy drilling operation and generate a drilling operation, but you can't generate one because it's not in the dropdown list. Then we're going to be taking a, a look at hole making versus drilling. What are the benefits of one versus the other? Then there's a, a, a lot of new dropdowns and a lot of new options in those dropdowns when we're looking at the create feature or the uh, specify feature dialog in hole mill making. Uh, copy paste and paste inside. The reason why I listed that is because what you're going to find is it's just much easier to take a hole making operation, copy it, paste it inside, and then change the drop down menu in the specify feature to where it's doing the entity of the hole that you want it to do, then to cre keep creating processes. And then the IPW flow of hole making. And IPW is the, the point of hole making. And X is a stock aware system. So what that means is it's always stock aware of what your in-process workpiece is, is at the moment that you get done cutting. So with drilling, there is no such thing as IPW. You're asking for a point. You're telling it to do it. There's no analysis in the background saying, is my tool adequate to do that? Am I trying to take a 20 millimeter drill, put it into a 12 millimeter hole? It'll just allow you to do whatever you want because it's only looking at a position. Hole making actually analyzes the volume of the material, which gives you a greater chance of successfully making that feature without any types of errors. And if there are errors or if there's any types of alerts, an X will tell you and it'll say, hey, this tool is too large or this feature has already been machined. So it gives you a, a, an analysis side of things that drilling never had. So drilling is no more. Hole making is now the primary operation for all hole features. Uh, drilling option rate operation. It was an operation that did not analyze the whole feature and it only ride on a point or a location. Now, hole making, just as I said, it analyzed the IPW to ensure your tooling will work and that all pieces of that whole geometry have been machined. And it's a much more robust and uh, it's, it's, a, it's a little bit more sophisticated of an operation. So there's a little bit more going on in there, but it's, it's still a very simple operation for the control that you have and the analysis that you have. So this is the hole making dialog. Nothing has really changed with your subtypes. You still have all, all of your original subtypes, but now you have circle milling, hole milling, and chamfer milling is a, a big one. Uh, before we were doing things like negative stock and unmodeled chamfers and things like that. Now we have a nice feature that will do that for us. So now we're gonna take a look at the live session of NX. So one of the things that's changed in 1899 is the iconography. You'll notice that all the icons appear to, they look different. And what we're seeing between the releases of when they first started continuous release and this monochrome style of icon rendering is they went with colorless. And now we're seeing with the, the newer later releases coming into the 1900 series, we're seeing them put color back in, which is, is kind of nice because they were just monochrome, empty, uh, like line type of, of icons. So it's much more visually appealing to you. So now when we're doing this program, we, we have to start with our, our standard processes, creating a workpiece, creating a blank, because I don't create my own feature geometries 99.9% .9 of the time, my feature groups. Whenever I'm doing contract programming for Ceratech, I always start with feature recognition. There's no reason why I would want to have to do this again all on my own when I've already done it. You just find all the features. And this is a dumb solid, so it's it's not looking at the the attributes of the holes. It's just looking at two and a half D machinable features. I'll call it a axis direction. Now I'm finding that those features, and this is going to group all my like holes together. It's going to find all the holes, then I'll group all the holes together. So then, I, instead of me going and creating feature groups myself, that it, it's doing this all, auto, all automatically for me. So I always start my programs out this way. So 
So now I have all my groups, all my holes, everything that's that's in place. Now I'll just go ahead and create the, the feature processes through feature-based manufacturing, just to get tooling, tool data, and tool path. Then once this is generated, then I'll, we'll open up some of these hole making operations and, and look at the different drop downs, the different parameters that are available now. And one question that had came in before the CES session was uh, a customer said that he no longer has the ability to select a hole and can change the tool axis. So there's a little bit more information that's needed from that question. Uh, the only way that you would ever really need to change your tool axis is direction of access. You hole making and drilling, everything all ran off of tool act or whole feature axis. So when you create a hole hole making operation, it's always going to snap to the axis of the tool to the axis of the hole. But you do have the ability to reverse the direction of that feature. So for instance, I'm going to show you on this part. So that it was a very good question. Whenever a feature is created in CAD, there's an axis orientation that that feature was created from. So if you look at how these features are, the top has counterbores, the bottom has counterbores. So if I'm working from top down direction at this orientation and I select a feature group that is a counterboard hole from the backside that was generated from the backside during CAD, then it's going to give me an axis direction of, of the backside. But you can, by selecting and, and filtering, the entities of that hole, you can reverse the direction. If you select the wrong entity that can't be reversed, it will not reverse it. So I'm assuming that's what the question was referring to. So let's find one of those features. One of those features would be these holes here. So those are counterbores from this side. So because those features were made from the other side, feature recognition wouldn't pick them up. Now, if we look for, for those holes, in the feature tree, something that wasn't grouped together or programmed, it's still because I limited the axis direction from Z down, it's probably not picked those up. So now if I go feature recognition again, and I tell it there is no direction of access and no limitation, it will find everything. But when I go to do feature-based programming to that, it, it's going to program the holes from the other side of the part, which we can't do that on a three-axis machine. We have to flip the entire part around. So now when I find these holes, so these counterboard holes, see the axis direction is underneath the part. That does not mean that we're bound to machine it from the underside of the part. Say I wanna do these clearance holes from this side and just do the counterboard from the other side. The way that you go about doing that We'll go ahead and create feature processes to them all. Now this will catch up the things that I, I didn't, it didn't catch on the first one. So right now it's just going through the, the tooling database, the machining knowledge editor database, the machining knowledge database, it's creating tools, operations that are adequate to cut those features. And then it populates them in the machine tool view and the pro, uh, geometry view. Now, once I go to the top level and regenerate, cause these won't be generated, or I can just do it from here since they're little. You're going to see that because I didn't select anything, I didn't give it any type of other options or change the parameters inside of NX. It's not going to have cut a lot of these holes. 
So those are counterbores from this side. But the only way that that was able to be done is when you go in here, you see that this dialog has changed as well, your countersinking dominator. Now, when you want to specify feature geometry, right here is the attributes of these holes. So you can see when we check these attributes, it's showing that that's what that, the purple volume is what the tool is going to actually do. We can designate with this tool what we're going to try to cut with it. So you see this is doing an underside chamfer. That would be the chamfer of that first step. Now, if I want, wanted to tell it, I could reverse the direction here. So it comes in the other side of the part, but as you can see, it, it refuses. It says it's impossible, it cannot do it. You flip through these, different attributes of these holes. And you can flip the geometry or flip the direction when it is actually able to be done. So now what it, but what you also have to remember is the way that these are reported. So this right here is, is like a, a two cylinder hole. That's what they called it. Two, a face two cylinder or face cylinder one, face cylinder two. So that hole is a two cylinder hole. Cylinder one would be the, the first cylinder at the direction of Z. So that would be the underside cylinder. So cylinder two would be the one that we're actually trying to cut. So now you see I flipped that around and it said, yes, I can do that. So it allowed the flip. So that's how you reverse the direction of a tool. You have to make sure that you dive down to the actual entity of the part that you can cut and then flip the direction. Because if you try to flip the direction of something that is impossible to be done, then it, it just will not flip it. So while we're here, let's look at a couple other features that are, are new to this version. You have different uh, cutting parameters and control points. So you can, you can do an in-process feature, which is going to look at the IPW, or you can just do a machining feature, and machining feature is going to look at actual part geometry. Both of these are going to give you the same tool path in this instance. But if you had some specific uh, circumstance, you can switch these and one will give you different results than the other. 99.9% .9 of the time, it will not give you a different result, but that one circumstance, it will. Now, if you check user defined depth, this will give you the ability to ignore NX's capability of doing a volume to volume analysis and taking the tool to matching surfaces. And it will make it to where it gives it a specific depth like in drilling. So just like everything in NX, if you force the hole making uh, operation to perform as such that drilling did, it will do it. And you will be able to create features that are incorrect with tooling that is incorrect, but you will have to ignore an alert that comes over on the right hand side of the, the dialog. So if you're used to, instead of building a step drill or a form tool and plunging it into a part, a specific depth that you know you have analyzed to be correct, and your part comes out correct, and you ignore the analysis ability of NX, this is how you do it. You have to predefine depth and check this depth. Now, if you don't do that, there's another way to do it where you can uncheck these. This is a center drill, so it doesn't have it. But if this was a drill, it would have a depth, and it would have this lock, and you could go user-defined, and you could manually change it, which is doing the same thing except a different method. As everybody knows, in NX, there's six ways to do the same thing. This is your list of the attributes of the hole. So you can you don't have to do analysis on it. Once you've created a feature group with it, all the analysis is done here. And if there is more information, drag it out. Here's your information. If at any time you change something and you want to view it, you just hit display. Now you can optimize the pattern after the fact too, and just go shortest path, reorder list. It'll reorder the tool path to be the quickest. You can reverse the list or you can uh, reorder from a parent group. And when you do this, it's going to revert back to default however you selected it. Once we hit okay to that. Now, if you notice the, the dialog boxes really, really look a lot different. So I'm gonna pull up a, a different version. This is NX 1892 release 2902, which is not very, very far back. That was only uh, about one, two, one, one release, one update back. So a lot's changed in, in just one update. 
the dialog boxes in the previous uh, the previous version look identical to 12. The new version 1899 and forward is going to have this style of, of dialog. And the purpose, I believe, that they, they went to that style of dialog is because of the customization that can take place. It's more friendly to the eyes and it doesn't feel like you're you're changing uh, a, an NX dialog box. You're actually creating your own. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'm doing this. You see how it's got the monochrome icons? There's no color to them. So they've changed. They've changed that, and they've also changed just the the sheer view of dialogues. So this is the the standard dialog NX view. This is for drilling, but it, the point is, it's it's the old old methodology. It looks exactly the same. The new version, it, it's not the same. Yes, ma'am. Uh, actually, we did have a question um, from the gentleman that asked the question before the CES session started. He said that he asked about the whole tool axis, and this question refers to drilling a five axis hole. Um, but he did say that he is not quite familiar with the feature programming. So, do you think it, that may be the problem? He just needs to learn that way of thinking. Uh, well, no, no, not necessarily, because whenever you create an operation. I don't have to use them. I don't have to use those feature groups. I can just tell it that I want to do whatever it may be. So I'll do an analysis here, find out what, and we all love this new analysis uh, dialogue, don't we? I hope I get great comments. It, it is a very amazing tool. There's a lot going on here. And once you, you, you learn how to use it, it's a great, great addition. But the old tool that was just quick, bam, bam, boom, no. It, we've got a lot of feedback from customer base over that. Uh, so I'll, I'll just check a, a diameter. So 406. I'll just grab any drill that will fit in there. There we go. So I'm just gonna tell it none. I don't wanna do any feature groups, which all that does is it means that it makes it forces you to start selecting so if you have 10 holes then you're going to select 10 if it's a, a tapped hole center drill drill tap 10 holes 30 picks on screen when i can do one of two things i can do my own create geometry create a ball, hole embossed geometry group select my features you would never do this, so this is a bad example. It all has to be the same same type of hole, or how would it ever say that this hole was finished when this one was finished? So I'm just showing you picking. So when I when I do say okay to this, now I have a, a geometry group that if I create an operation, I can now select that geometry group that I just created, hole and boss geometry, which will include those features. So that's one way of doing it. Or you can automatically recognize them and put them in a feature group all on its own. So that's one way of doing it to where you're programming a lot of features without having to select them. But you always are going to have to know how to manually do this. So if I create an operation and I do just the same, I go into feature, specify feature, I got those features. Now, when you're talking machining axis direction on a five axis part, it doesn't matter where that hole is. If I select if I go into the feature group itself, let me pull it out of unused items because that means it doesn't have any information. Now if I go into this feature group and I start I delete these features. And I make this feature, this hole here, that's 90 degrees different from the axis direction of that machine tool. So when I go to program this, it's automatically going to snap to that axis of a direction, the, the way it's going to be able to do it. So that it doesn't matter in three-dimensional space where that hole actually resides. I'm just trying to show you an axis direction difference, which applies to all axes. So it doesn't matter that it's just 90. It's just it's different than the work zero. So when I go in here to look at this, it's telling me that this is my Z axis. I don't, I'm still not understanding 
why I would ever want this to be something different than the axis of the feature. The tools aren't going to come in at a one degree angle or they're going to be straight normal to the, the feature. The only way that I can kind of understand it is where I would want to switch the directions. But now if you're asking me if I have 20 holes along a curved surface, how do you manipulate the tool axis direction to go along the surface? It will do it automatically is my answer. The Z axis is always going to be the acceptable axis direction and the tool axis is always going to be concentric to the feature. So if that's not the answer to your question, uh, Andrea, could you email my email address to him and then we can uh, directly communicate after the session? Absolutely. Okay, so um, moving on with the, the presentation, there's been a lot that's changed in the, the newest version. The dialogues are mainly the, the biggest thing, but in whole making itself, they've given you a lot of control. So now when I say copy paste inside, what I mean in with copy paste inside is exactly what my example was. If I have multiple tools going in the same feature, and then I have another feature that may use two of those tools, instead of recreating all this work, why wouldn't I just copy that operation and place it into another work group, another uh, geometry group or feature group and utilize that information. So if I were to do that, I'm just gonna go ahead and remove the entire program. I'll go ahead and I'll also remove all of the features that it's already found. So now I'm starting with scratch. I have this whole boss geometry group. I'm just gonna pick four like toes, a couple like holes that I'm, I'm sure of what they are. So I know that this hole, this hole, this hole, and this hole are all the same. Now, do you see how my Z axis direction snapped to the axis direction that it was built upon in CAD? It's the normal direction vector to machine something that has, NX sees this and says, okay, so the way to do this is from the side, get it all done complete, which is fine, but not if they lock us to that, but they've given us the abilities to modify this. When I create operation down here in the geometry group, I select just the geometry group, which is going to program all four holes. So. The other way of doing that is not selecting it and then having to go into the operation, each operation, and select all of those individually. The rule of thumb that I was taught when I started NX was if you're going to touch something more than one time on the screen, create a group for it. Create a geometry group. Create a middle area group. Create a group so that you have one drop down and one selection. Uh, the method is your, your uh, stock allowances. So everything's cool here. We're going to go in here to the specified feature. Now here we have all the different machining area entities that have to do with that part. So since this was done modeled from the underside forward up to us, the first cylinder is going to be the counterbore. So the top chamfer is going to be the, the uh, first cylinder. Top chamfer two is going to be the floor of the counterbore going into the through hole. Now, if I go model depth, that's just seeing from top surface to bottom surface. So it's just showing the depth of the, the model. And the blue is what it's going to be able to take it out. And you notice that it's showing you the point of the drill. So you see everything that's happening. Now, if I take this to cylinder one, if I flip direction, see how it won't even allow me to? It says I cannot do that. Now, if I go cylinder two, but I flip direction, now my Z is actually up and I'm machining it from top down. So I hit OK here and I generate. Now, once I have this, if I have multiple steps, multiple, anything that is a sponge cutting operation, the most efficient way is just copy. Now I have two options. I have paste and paste inside. Paste is going to be at the same level of this geometry group. So you see that it's not inheriting any information from that whole boss geometry. If I open this up, there is no information to specify feature geometry. 
Now, if I go paste inside, it actually places it in, inherits the information, dialog is filled out. So that's the difference between copy and paste, copy and paste inside. And then I would just go through and I would change my tool to some other tool. And now with hole making, I get alerts. Features already been machined with previous operation. So now I have all these tools at my disposal to be able to go in there and say, well, oh, I already machined that. Or I'm trying to take away as much necessary analysis from the programmer and put it in the hands of NX. NX is a very powerful tool. So it, when I'm doing uh, educational courses, I teach all of my students, don't, don't sit down and then analyze this part and say, I'm going to do this A, B, C, D, E, F, G, all the way through Z. I'm going to sit down and create all my tools. I'm going to define everything before I start. NX is just a, it's a very, very intuitive system that just start, start somewhere. I don't, it, I don't care if it, I'm going to drill the through hole first, but I know I'm going to have to counterbore it first. It does not matter. Just start programming and then organize in program overview after the fact. Regenerate. All the operations will catch up. IPWs will be correct. You won't crash and in, in holes. Things will be right. So I try to take the, the need for the programmer to do all the work like we had for many, many years. We had to do that. We had to put down these encyclopedias of operational procedures and manufacturing methodologies before we even started the part. With NX, we don't really have to do that today. If we do, we're taking a lot of the power out of the software that we have at our disposal. So here's just a couple options that we went through. We went through the machining area entities. We went through how to reverse the directions, why it will allow you to reverse directions sometimes, why it will not allow you to reverse directions sometimes, how to uh, I don't want, for lack of better terms, how to cheat the hole making operation to be able to be manually programmed depth wise to, or diameter wise for spot drill, things like that, to where you can control it yourself if need be. I don't advise it, but it's capable. Now, three takeaways for, uh, from today's session is the efficiencies improvement of hole making in comparison to drilling. I know I talk to a lot of, uh, yeah, CAM programmers, NX CAM programmers that are from previous versions that they just dislike the hole making dialogue. But I can't revert back to the drilling dialogue. I, it just does not, I don't even understand the chaotic, archaic methodology that they, they created that thing. So hole making is a, a great thing for me. Other people coming out from other softwares, I get feedback from them that they wished it wasn't the way it is. But it's a matter of learning. Once you learn it, it gives you the tools where it makes it less likely for you to create an error. And if you do create an error, it gives you a messaging to tell you what it is, where it is, and how to fix it. So it, the hole making, how intuitive it is, it's a very intuitive operation, and how to create an operation type once, then copy and paste it and change, change the drop downs for different features. So, and that's what I was going to show too, is when you say I had a drill and, or a chamfer cutter, uh, center drill, and I just copy pasted it. I can just change that feature, machining feature type to do the, the chamfer, the cylinder, the bottom cylinder. So you copy paste inside, change the attributes, and then re reprocess instead of creating from scratch. So whenever you're ready to take it to the next level, Serotech is a full service engineering uh, company. Uh, we do engineering all the way from conceptual design all the way through manufacturing, additive manufacturing, analysis, FEA, we ha we do everything team center from start to finish, full service. So if you have those needs, uh, don't forget to reach out to us. Thanks for checking out our channel. If you like what you saw, make sure to like and subscribe down below so you don't miss out on any new videos. Follow us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter for the latest engineering news and information. And to see all of our upcoming events, please visit our website at saratech.com slash events.